Okay, indeed. Y you already know what game I'm playing today. I don't even need to say. It, if you don't know, then why are you even playing games? This is one of the greatest games with one of the greatest intros of all time. Like, this. Mm. Huh. Leader of the bunch, Jenkin know him well. He's finally back to kick some tail. His coconut gun can fire his butt, and if he shoots ya, it's gonna hurt. He's bigger and faster and stronger too. He's the first member of the DK crew. Huh! Like, like, come on! Like, like you cannot go wrong with Donkey Kong 64. It's <clears throat> well, you probably could go wrong with it. And then, you know, there, there are things <laughs> that are wrong with it, but I I will be going over <clears throat> everything I can with this one. Like, I've been talking about doing a GWC plays for this one for a while. Like, I think I mentioned it in a few <clears throat> uh, GWC plays, and I think I mentioned like a playthrough or so, because this game kind of had a resurgence of recent, like within the last few months, and like, it seems like the public opinion on this game is changing, which is like, hey, where were you all these years ago? <laughs> Inflate himself, just like a balloon. This crazy Kong didn't exist to him. Oh, like. Game, game's class. Hey, Grant Kirkhope, like, where were you at? Legend. It's like, this is, this is Grant Kirkhope's magnum. It's like, he's like, please don't, don't say that. He, he, he doesn't sound like that either. I got the good Grant Kirkhope. Yeah, I don't know what his, uh, I can't, I can't get, do, get do him. I'm not going to do him dirty. I have too much respect for Grant Kirkhope. I have too much respect for this game and this song, especially this verse. Seems such a breeze. He may move slow, he can't jump high. Damn this Kong's one hell of a <coughs> I'm so mad in melee they censored it. He's one heck of a guy. Like come on. The legend, the crew. It's just okay. It's just like Wii VC on the Wii Virtual Console. The game runs <clears throat> at a smooth frame rate, and it like throws it off where it's like the intro is desynced. Because in the N64, like with the lag and that, as soon as it's like the, the, the bomb goes off, it's like, oh yeah, whoa, it blows up. And here it's, it's so smooth that it doesn't even have time to do that. Yeah, Donkey Kong 64, this, this game, I, I have a lot to say about it. This was one of those games that, uh, w when it came out, I, this was like the big rent game. It was like, okay, you know what? I, I, uh, I want to go to Blockbuster. I want to see what new games they have. Ooh, Donkey Kong 64. I love Donkey Kong Country. I'd love to see uh, what they got in store with this one. And that's exactly what I did. I went, saw the cover. I was like, ooh, Donkey Kong 64. Oh, oh snap. Don't mind if I do. I'll do that. I'll play that. I did. I rented it. I, I played it all weekend. I didn't beat it. <laughs> Which, if you played this game, you already know. Like, there's no way I was beating it. Yeah, I, I skipped the intro cutscene. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. I, I, I recommend checking it out at a later point, but it's a little too long and I got stuff I want to get through this on this edition, so 
Whatever I can do to maximize time talking about the game, the better. But yeah, getting back to what I was saying, so it's, it's that weekend. <clears throat> I rented the game. Tried to beat it, I couldn't. I, I think the furthest I got was like... Do I, I kind of barely got through Jungle Japes? Like, like, maybe I got to Frantic Factory, I think. That's as far as I got, and I didn't even, like, uh, have a lot done in there. I think I got lost. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't have all the Kongs unlocked, even. Like, I think I had... I definitely had Diddy, because it's like, there's no way you can pass him. If you play this game, there's absolutely no way you miss Diddy. The game legit just, like, they put the camera right to where he's at. Like, it, it'd be impossible to miss him. The other ones, it's a little hard. You got to kind of work your way to get to him. What? Where's the music at? That, now that... There we go. Okay, I was about to say. So... <clears throat> If you haven't uh, realized already, I am playing this on an emulator, which this might actually have been a big mistake. So this is uh, this is probably the best time to talk about this. But uh, DK64 is a notoriously buggy, glitchy game. Like it's notorious to the point of when this game was in development, there was a game-breaking bug that was discovered that destroyed the game it crashed and there, there was no way or anything that rare did they could figure out what the, the problem was and the only fix to the issue was if you had the the extra ram for the n64 like the little expansion pack that came with majora's mask <clears throat> if you had that like plugged in it fixed the glitch the game doesn't rec like need it like the game's not uh like a workhorse that it requires that thing to work. The only reason the expansion pack was ever required was because it's the only thing that makes that glitch not happen. And there's there's a notorious uh, amount of other bugs and glitches in this game. Like it, it, in that case, the game <laughs> has issues. That's what I meant. Problems. That's what I meant. This game has a lot of glitches and bugs, and they can happen very frequently at times. When you're playing on N64, it can happen. Sometimes just do the, the dumb luck and just the game. Uh, when you're playing on emulator, oh, it could just happen at any time. Like N64 emulation is still one of those things that's like still pretty janky. Why is this? Why is the screen doing that? Well, let me fix this. Some, the screen's doing something a little weird. Sorry, it's bothering me a second ago. It's like, so I can. That hopefully should fix it. And, and boy, boy, there's some glitches. Like in, in this in this video, I want to try and show off some some of the glitches I can at least pull off. Because some of the other ones in this game are a little out of my jurisdiction. I can't I can't do it. But <clears throat> there, there's a good amount of them that I can do, and and they're so easy to do that. Like, y you, yes, you watching right now could pull them off in, like, seconds. Yeah, but right now it got the first move. So now we can get out of this little training area. There's actually something really interesting with this game that was in, like, a pre-release. Actually, before I actually uh, head out of here. Because this is the last time we're going to be in this area ever. Like, the only reason you would come back here is, like... At the end of the game, that's about it. So, <clears throat> before this game came out, this is, this is kind of going to like Banjo Kazooie and the Stop and Swap, which I haven't recorded or done a GWC plays on Banjo Kazooie, but when I do, I'm going all in on Stop and Swap and that whole business. I'm not going to talk about it here. But for some reason, early on in DK64's development, in this corner right here, was a Banjo and Kazooie like <clears throat> cabinet. And it was like estimated that you would use an item from Banjo Kazooie to get an item in this game. And when Stop and Swap didn't happen, uh, it got taken out of this. But it's just interesting that it was in there. Like, it's, there's an image of it, and it's like, huh, I wonder what that would have been. Alright, so this was a point, pointless fact toy out of the way. I, 
but it's just something interesting about it. And, and God, the great Kirkhope tradition. God, I'm gonna talk about more about this music a as we get on, but I, I have nothing but kind words to say about Grant Kirkhope. He, he to, to this day, I, I don't think he's made a bad soundtrack. Like, and I'm not even saying that it's like, oh, you're just like, like trying to do like. No, like I, I have played almost every game that he's done work on, and like I haven't seen a song or an album or a game where I was like, no, the music just wasn't cutting it. Like not most of the stuff he's worked on, like the music has been like fantastic. Like he has a style that just works. It, it's pretty much a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and he takes it hard because you have such a, like a unique sound that you can just kind of instantly hear it and it's like I know like, oh that's Grant Kirkhope and, and this tune like man classic classic tune like there's that recent uh, Mario Rabbids DLC that came out last year like when that when that song was in the game I almost I got I almost got a little emotional I was like oh my god they brought this thing back but but here is the first actually uh before I, I do this, so this is the Banana Fairy Island. This is where you would come to get the, the photos. Now I need to be Tiny Kong to get into this area. It takes a bit to get here, but and here's the first glitch. So if you swim underwater and you just tap the swim button, the, which is the B button, as fast as possible while using L. Okay, let me see if I can do this now. You just tap it as fast, you just swim underneath. If you swim towards the middle and kind of get your, your view right a bit, okay. We can get up onto this platform here. And if we do it just right, we got into the loading zone. And right now we're in here. This is the room where DK and no other Kong in the game should be able to get into. Like this, this text is not from D Donkey Kong, it's from Tiny, but it just, like you're never supposed to be here. Catch a man of fairies is by trapping him in this camera. Do do do. These are your friends. You also get this little thing too, which is also really useful. It's the reason why I come here early and do this. Like yeah, it's breaking the game. Cause you're not supposed to have that move for a bit and you're not supposed to even be in this room. But <clears throat> yeah. That, that's the first first glitch in the game, I will say. So, see, now I can collect these. Now, now I'm good. But I just, just as, a, as a refresher, you use Z to swim. You tap the B button as fast as possible and you just go underneath. It's easy peasy. And there's also another way of getting uh, you can do it here too, and if you get to the swim, if you swim in a certain spot, you like uh, you like go to a secret. You go to a secret area in the game, like a I think it was like an area for like a cutscene. It's in like the intro, uh, and there's a way to get up here too, but I I don't have the skill to do it. There's it, I would just say because I'm not I'm not a speed run like uh, dictionary for this game. I don't know everything about Donkey Kong 64. But I, I recommend watching speedruns. Like the speedruns for Donkey Kong 64 are, are really cool. Because like I said, this game is very broken. And you combine a broken game and glitches. And it's just, there's so much you can do. It's just crazy. Like a perfect example, I brought it up a lot in my uh, impractical playthrough of Ocarina of Time with the randomizer, but Ocarina of Time is a broken game that a regular player can never break. Like all these crazy glitches you see in Ocarina of Time, people beating the game in like 20 minutes. A regular player is never gonna do that. It, it's too impossible and so precise when the, the steps you have to do. that I couldn't just randomly play and say, oh, uh, I just warped to Ganon. Like it, you wouldn't do that or even some other things. In this game, 
Now, there are some hard tricks. Like, probably the trick to get into a hideout helm early is, like, ridiculous and getting through that hell area. Whole area, but... A lot of... Sometimes the glitches in this game can just fall on you. <laughs> it's like you're not even trying to do them. It's like, oh, I just uh, did this. <laughs> it just happens sometimes. I've tried doing some things. Like, oh, I don't think I was supposed to do that. Now, now, there is a trick here. I wish I could get it. I've only gotten it once, and it looks really cool when you get it. But you can roll through the door and catch, catch the banana at the same time. So I'm going to try and see. Let's go. Got it! Yo! I got it in the video. <clears throat> now, now, despite all this, you may think, oh, uh, d d do I speedrun this game? No. <laughs> I I'm just a fan of this game, and I've watched a lot of speedruns of it. <clears throat> Getting back to that, because I mentioned it in the beginning of this, that I, I am a, a genuine fan of this game. I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I'm a fan in a ironic sense of, of, uh, it, or I like it because of the memes. Like, no, I, I generally like this game, and it has, it has its problems in a few points, but it's most stuff that I can overlook. And it could be like some other games where I'm like, I'm generally pretty forgiving on it. Just nostalgia talking, but I think it's still a fairly fun game. This, this one really starts kicking. Like you get this little Jungle Jape remix. But now we're talking, now we're Donkey Kong. It's actually a really cool trick you can do where you can uh, get to that without using those, but I didn't do it. And here's the Grant Kirkhope right there. If you have the track, you go into the cave. You get that little transition. You know, it's to a different track, to a different song, but the, the ones where it's like, you go from like, Jungle Jake, you go underwater and it's a whole different theme. That, that is what makes those games like so good. Like, when I first saw that in Banjo-Kazooie and, and, like, other games, like, when games started doing that, I, like, it's such a small detail, but it, like, really blows me away. Like, it's just the act of, like, having the, the, min, the, the music change as you go underwater adds so much depth to the game. And the soundtrack. Here we go, I'm gonna go into water. And you get a little effect. Banjo Kazooie's the king of that, because like every single game level has its own uh thing for when you go underwater. So it has its own version. Like the, the banjo the Banjo Kazooie soundtrack, I remember I got it on Grant Kirkhope's uh, website when he was selling it. I think it was on his like band camp. And it had like it had like a hundred and like fifty tracks almost. It was ridiculous, but it had everything. Like okay, it's got uh, twenty versions of Spiral Mountains. Here's Spiral Mountain if you're underwater. Here's Spiral Mountain if you're near this area. Here's a uh, Mumbles Mountain if you're uh, in this section of the level. If you're inside uh, this house, this is what it sounds like. This is it's like the amount of songs created when you could have easily gone for one. Like, those are the stuff where it's like, mm, it's just cool. Mm. It's when you finish it, there's like this one boo you hear that's like... <laughs> there's watermelons. That, that's the best. This is the best DK sound right there. Like, I was actually a little mad when I played Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze where DK was just monkey like, gorilla sounds. Like, what is this? No. G give me the Donkey Kong I know. Let give him the... Yeah. Yeah, give me that. That's, what, that's the DK I know. Or the... Okay. Like, none of this... <clears throat> it's like, no, it's not, it's not DK. So I was kind of mad and smashed. I was like, dang, uh, where is he? Where's that voice? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I 
You know what? While I'm at it, you know, I, I should, I could go save Diddy Kong right now and do that whole side quest. But you know, why don't I just go beat the level? Why don't I just go do that? I could have done that bad little trick too. <clears throat> it's like why connect? Oh, see, here we go. There's the emulation stuff. Th this game runs particularly bad on emulator. So you're gonna expect to see some weird like flickering and just weird glitches happen. And it's all just due to emulator. But yeah, here we go. Trough and scoff. Uh, gotta give these guys 60 bananas. We can get through here. I have 15. So what am I gonna do? Now I could go up there and play the game regular like the, they, they intended me to do. Or I could just uh, do this. Now, now this may take me a few tries. But if you do a certain thing, you can uh, go under, underneath and clip through. I don't know the exact frame. I haven't done it in a while. So this could take me a bit. And for the purpose of uh, this video, I, I do not want to uh, not show it. I was like, I kind of find it funny. This is like almost turned into like the. I'm trying to speed run this game. You do this. It's like I don't, I don't run this game. <laughs> I could be doing it wrong. I haven't actually seen. I haven't uh, tried this in a long time. So th this could take me a bit. I guess what I'm doing is I can talk a little more about uh, when I first had the game because I kind of got off track. So, getting back to that when I was, uh, when I first got <clears throat> the game, I rented it from that Blockbuster. I played it for a weekend. I got to, like, Frantic Factory. And I kind of, I got lost. And then, of course, that Monday came and I was like, all right, John, well, the game has to go back now. And I was like, oh, but I barely scratched the surface on the game. And I really did. I, I didn't think, that, I thought there was not much left of the game. But I was, I was playing it a lot that weekend. I was like, oh, this, I must be close. And I was like, nope, you're, you're not, you're not even like at the 25% mark of the game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, game went back uh, a few weeks later. That time comes. Oh, you want to rent a game? Sure. Do I rent? Donkey Kong 64. And, you know, I had to start over again because, uh, <clears throat> I didn't have one of those memory card packs to save the game on. It was on the cartridge. So, somebody probably at that blockbuster, because they only had, I think, one copy of the game, had deleted my, my save. So, I had to start over, which, that is something, uh, people nowadays, if you've never rented games and you've kind of only played them from, like, Redbox or borrowed them, all, all the game saves now are on the memory card or on the system itself. Like, back when the games were on the system itself on the cartridge, if you're renting it, you were never guaranteed you'd get your save. So if you're, like, trying to play a long game, like, say, Ocarina of Time, and you're renting it and you have to turn it back in, did this kiss your save goodbye? Because, uh, somebody is deleting that thing. Like, I had to delete a, a someone save file, too. Like, and it always hurts because like, man, somebody put a lot of time in this and they may get, they may come back to this too. But it's like, man, but this guy's a little further in the game. I don't want to mess up his save. And, and thankfully now it's, n it's none of that. It's like, oh, well, I can just, it's on my PS4. Oh, I got a backup on some SD card and oh, the cloud has a save on it. But thankfully nowadays things are good. So it's, uh, in that case, it, it, it's fine. Back then it sucked. So yeah, I, I rented the game again. I, I couldn't I couldn't beat it obviously it's a long game made more progress but still long so I didn't rent it for a while because I had rented it a bunch I think I just kind of took a break from it and then at a certain point I was like you know what I kind of want to play it again so I rented it again and I think that's always crazy about this is like the time when I rented it so It was like, I was like playing, I think I was playing Final Fantasy X at the time. I was like hard in that game. I think it was when that game like 
barely had come out, or like, I was like, maybe a few months in. Which, oh man. <clears throat> At the time of this recording, that Final Fantasy X uh, remaster on the Switch isn't here. But ju just uh, as an early uh, kind of tease of it, when that remaster comes for the Switch, that is a GWC play that's probably going to be the longest. Okay, maybe not as long as Kingdom Hearts, but there is such so many stories about that game that I have to tell, and just a lot to it. But when I was heavy in Final Fantasy X at the time, I think I took a break from it. I was like, you know, I kind of want to play something else. Let me go back to that blockbuster. And I went back, and I was like, you know what? What do I rent? I can rent PS2. And I just saw DK64 chilling there. I was like, you know what? Let me go for it again. And I rented it again. I got a little further, but I still couldn't beat it. And I think finally, like, like my parents were just like, okay, we, we get the point. You love this game. So they just ended up buying the game for me one day. Just like, here, here you go. Here's your own copy. Stop renting it. And I was like, cool. Now I can finally sit down and, and beat it. And it, it took a long time. Because at this point, PS2 was still huge. So I was like on that. And it was kind of like a rare... I would go back to N64 for a bit, but I, I uh, over time, just periodically get back on this game. And I did finally beat it. And it's like, this, this, this is such a long game. And there's just so much you got to deal with. Like, 100%ing this game, I almost don't even recommend it. Like, like, the only thing you get out of 100%ing this game is you go into a special breed of people of saying, of being able to say, hey, I 100%ed Donkey Kong 64. That is it. Now, to some people, that might be like, cool, I can use that as like a little thing. Like, oh yeah, I 100%ed that game. To everyone else, it's like, god, look how much time you wasted. <laughs> like, this game, like, there's so much to collect in this game and all this other things. Like, it, it was actually in, like, for the gaming Guinness Book World Records, it was number one in terms of like the most collectibles of any game ever made. Like it's it's just an obscene number, but there's so much between uh, all of the, all of the bananas for each, for all five Kongs, all of the golden bananas for all the Kongs in each level, all of the coins, all of the uh, banana coins, the banana fairies, the blueprints, everything there, there's so much in this game to collect like it, it almost it, at a certain point it gets like you almost get sick of it it's like i'm, I'm sick of collecting this, this garbage like every five seconds and then you get to a new area it's like cool i get to i i get to get some stuff and i gotta go back and get another kong because i'm missing there's some bananas here so now i gotta come back and do and do this like for the longest time i was actually really hoping of like I'd love a uh, remaster of this game, like with fixing things, like letting people change Kongs on the fly. Like, if somebody out there made a mod of like, okay, you can change uh, to any Kong you want at any time, it would pretty much speed up this entire game's process. Because really, the thing that takes the most time in this game is is you, you having to go back to that that barrel to change Kongs. Like, it it stinks. <laughs> See right now, okay, I'm Donkey Kong, and I gotta go switch. I gotta go switch to Diddy. We got him now. We're cool. We're gonna get the little scoop on it. Five golden bananas. Gotta get your bananas and your coins. So now, now we're him. And I assure you, while I'm playing as Diddy, I'm gonna see a golden banana for Donkey Kong. And then it's like, well, now I have to go back to Donkey Kong to go collect that one. And especially when you're going 100%, it, it's a pain because it's like, dang, I'm so far away from the banana. And it's like, where I'm at, it's out of the way going back. Like, that's probably my big gripe. And there are some ridiculous uh, mini games in this. So, there is one in particular that... it If you mention it to anybody who has played Donkey Kong 64, they probably get chills on the back of their hair. It probably like induces like uh, PTSD and like like war flashbacks. If I if I mention Beaver Bother, that's all I have to say. If you played this game, 
That is all I have to say. You already know what that mini game is. You know how much damage it's done to everybody who's played it. Now, now, unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately, I'm not getting to it in this part because I'm not playing this whole game. <laughs> but Beaver Bother is this mini game where you have to get these beavers into this hole and it's completely broken. Like it, it is fundamentally broken and it, it's so hard to get it to work that like I still never like like there are some consistent methods that people do and it never worked for me It's just such a pain in the it's a pain in the ass to deal with and I Every time I play this game I when I get to that point where it's like beaver bother It's like I don't want to deal with this like this is bothering me having to play this and, and Here we go. Here it is. See now, now there's these red bananas, but I'm not diddy So now I got to go back to the barrel and come all the way back here, but thankfully there's one right here. But in some other levels, it's not like that. It's not as simple as you you go down a bit and they're here. Like I was getting heated a second ago talking about this, but th this is like these are like one of the major gripes I have with the game. It's it's just this because it's just it just takes so much of the game is just going to the barrels and back and forth. Like I just. Like, I just wish they had a quick select. Like, could you imagine if Majora's Mask had that? If, like, you wanted to change to the mask and you had to go to, like, a specific spot to do it. Like, oh, you want to be Goron Link? Well, you need to go to this spot to go change. Oh, you want to be Zora? You got to do this. Instead of just, all right, you just uh, switch on the fly and there you go. You're you're now, you're now Goron Link. Like, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of insane. Area over here, these huge, huge beavers and, and cranky. The, the original Donkey Kong. I, I will still go. Through. Like people say, it's a theory. Like I don't believe it's a theory. I think at this point, it's like no, that's that, that's real. But the theory that uh, Cranky Kong is the original Donkey Kong from like the arcade game, and the Donkey Kong that we're playing is Donkey Kong Jr. Like that. That's one of those ones where it's like, no, nah, I don't think that's a of rumor that that it's, it sounds too good to be true and like I'll take that as just DK lower. I think they also mentioned that in like country two or country. There we go. I got the banana. I got my first banana coin for one Kong, for one level. And there's so many more to go. <laughs> I was, I was actually really happy with my play. I was like, yeah, he's back in this game, all right. I got my character. This, like, Rampy's a beast in Donkey Kong Country. Which, now that I've now that I finally played Donkey Kong 64 on this, now I gotta get on Country, because... Country is... I have nothing but good things to say about that. Like, well, this game, I have some stuff that's like, yeah, this game has some issues with points. I can't think of a moment in Country where I'm like, oh, this... Okay, come on. Charge. There we go. Oh, I forgot. I sh One thing I should have played in the intro, I, sh I probably shouldn't have skipped, is that uh, could have seen King K. Rule, my the, the best character in Smash Ultimate. <clears throat> like, it, like I was like when King K. Rule got announced, I was like, he might, like, he might be my main, and it's like it, it came true. Oh, and this part sucks too. I, I hate I hate these sections. Sometimes they're a pain to deal with. Okay, I get it. Got it. All right, that's one out of so many more. cameras down there. Yeah, King, in Smash Ultimate, King K. Rule is my, he's like my main right now. Along with Kirby, who I've been sticking with, and like Link, who I've been sticking with since the beginning. But King K. Rule has been pretty, pretty great so far in Ultimate. And I, I was actually, when that first uh, Final Smash was revealed for what his is, I was, I was like, oh my god, they, 
Nintendo actually recognizes that Donkey Kong 64 exists. They, they didn't just leave it in the dirt like, huh, what game? Oh, we don't know what that is. What's Donkey Kong 64? Like, they were like, oh, yeah, here's 64. It's like, yes, as it should be. I don't have my shortcut sadly, so this is gonna be it's gonna be pretty bad. Actually, this isn't the time one, never mind, this isn't too bad. I think actually this is, I'll probably call I'll probably go to the next level, cause uh I think I can uh there's some more stuff that I can do. Well there's a lot of stuff I can do here really, like, like even though <clears throat> even though I only have two Kongs, I have to come back later on with the rest and there's like so much more of this level left to do <laughs> I uh, I'm gonna call it here like there's a whole section with Diddy in this mine and there's still a lot of stuff for tiny and chunky and lanky but like I said I, I am not doing that right now Wait, let me do this thing too cuz I, I was talking to a friend about this recently he was like that's that's not scary as a kid, I don't know what it was. This thing is, as a kid kind of kind of freaked me out a bit. Wrinkly Kong. I think it was that sound. It was like that little scream it made. I was like, why does it do that? And that music kind of has this like kind of haunting thing to it. It's like in minor. I was like, Ugh, I don't, I don't want your help. <laughs> Like now, now of course it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like kind of creep me out. But back then, back then I was like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> but maybe I'm off base. But I was also the same guy who said last October that Majora's Mask was a game that, that scared me as a kid. And hey, it, it did. Like if you if you want to hear that, go watch uh, the GWC plays Majora's Mask because I talk about that whole experience. And also, I like this game mentioned DKC3 because no one ever talks about that game. That, one, that one's pretty good. Like, you don't play as Donkey Kong in that one. You don't play as Diddy. But so that, 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 one, that one's pretty fun. It's no Donkey Kong Country or, or Diddy Kong 2, but uh, but it was it was good on, on its own, too. I can't really say, like, but, like there wasn't really anything wrong with the DKC trilogy. Like, it was, it was great. And then... When returns came, it was this landmark moment. Like, st still to this day, like no matter how many times I watch it, the the reveal of Donkey Kong Country Returns at E3 still still gets me. It's just like, cause it's just like with how long Donkey Kong had been gone for a bit, and like it is like DK64 is like the last Donkey Kong game. <clears throat> Kind of in a way, like of a kind of just a main Donkey Kong game, but in terms of just like a Donkey Kong platformer, it'd been like ages since Donkey Kong Country 3. Because I'm not counting those Game Boy ones. Like no one's counting Donkey Kong, like <laughs> Donkey Kong, or or the weird port to Donkey Kong on like Game Boy, which all which ran bad. But just saying Donkey Kong back in like a 2D platformer, and then hearing that Jungle Jates version. And then you hear who's doing the sound, and then you hear like the soundtrack, like, oh, it's perfect. And then Tropical Freeze came out and just destroyed it, be becoming one of the best platformers. <laughs> Still, I, I love Tropical Freeze. God damn. There's a wife's kick. Every, everyone at Rare just kills it in the soundtrack department. David Weiss. Brilliant job in Donkey Kong Country and a lot of other rare games. Robin Beanland, great job on Conquer. Like, Rare always has, in the terms of the soundtrack department, they killed it. Okay. That's it. After like, I 
I forgot. I haven't done this. I've only done this a few times. Hope I can pull this off. It'd be really embarrassing if I just don't. It's like, well, let me go find another banana real quick. But there, there is a genuine way to get through every single uh, banana door. Like there's a, there's a strategy for every single one. I remember it was something like you you, you do it, and you, you you do it on one side and you like turn, and like DK, and like his swing is what causes it. Like his swing gets through the door. I know it had to be DK for this. Part. I don't think it was Diddy Kong. Come on. Oh, yeah, and also just the Angry Aztec a lobby has some pre pretty cool music too. And it was another cool uh, characteristic of the music in this game. Going back to Grant Kirkhope, just the lobby of the level. Uh, before you enter like the world has its own distinctive version of the DK Isle theme that gives you a hint of what that level's theme's gonna be. Like Crystal Cri Caves has like this kind of very light touch to it and here it's got that very kind of Egyptian kind of feel. I can't pull this off. Like I'm about to like look up a YouTube video. <laughs> How to enter the door. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, here they enter the door. Uh, you get another, you get five bananas, and you just enter. <laughs> Stop trying to glitch. Play the game regular. I'm gonna have to go find another banana because I I forgot how to do it. I haven't done it in like three years, and I don't want that half last half of this video to be that unless I have to like leave and that's how it's done is that you have to get close enough to him where it'll work so I'll try that if not then I, I legit will go for another banana so I just want to hear that the, the, the leaving sound Has to be that. Come on, Jen, you can do this. I feel I'm like right on it too. It's like, sorry, we we've, we've patched this out of the uh, emulated versions of this. You have to get that last banana. I think the last part of this video has been nothing but me failing at this, but it's like, I I'm too far now. Like, I should have practiced this off camera before I started this, but it's like, I wasn't planning on, I wasn't planning on doing these tricks. That's the thing, when I first started off, I was like, oh, I'll show a few that I can do. I don't know why I thought, you know what? I can do this confidently when I I've only done it once. I'll, let me try and see maybe if I need Diddy to do it, but I don't know. I feel like I was Donkey Kong when I did it. I don't know. We'll find out. Try DK one more time. It'll be fun to go all the way back just to get <laughs> just to get that one banana. There's actually a lot more I want to say about this game. I, I'm almost like, like, dang, I'm gonna like do another part just to have more to say, like an add-on, because like there's there's so much more to talk about with it. Like I. I didn't mention some of the cooler mini games of it and like this stuff I still really kind of wanted to show off. I'd, I'd almost be like, let me stop playing right now, activate some cheats to unlock everything, and then just go ham for a bit. 
But I, feel I need another, I need a whole other video for that. I, I wouldn't want to dictate this one because this one kind of has its its point across. Legit forgot. Dang it. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call. I can't do it. <laughs> Sadly. That, that, that sucks. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm about to make an addendum part. Like, just an extra 20 minutes in a separate video just to be like, all right, here's the stuff I wanted to say and couldn't. And I'm gonna, like, look up how to do that thing. Like, it's personal. Like, I couldn't do the thing. But there's, like, a, there's some crazy glitches in this game. Like, there's one where it's, like, you float. Like, you have to get on a ledge. And, like, it's called, like, DK Hovers. I, I only did it once for, like, five seconds. And I was like, this is cool. I never could do it again. But like I said, uh, speedruns of this game are cool. They're, they're they're very enjoyable. But overall, this this is this is a really this is a really fun game for me. Like even though it, it's a lot of stuff to collect, I, I still enjoy it. Like people say, it, it's a point. Like it went too far. Like Banjo Kazooie was a like, perfect like middle ground. Tui started to go. Uh, further on with that idea and they kind of pushed more of what you collect and like how the world were uh, how the world interacted and you have uh with this game it, it really pushed it to the to the, the limits as you had a huge abundance of stuff to collect with a, a lot of characters across really big vast like levels but like while this game was like scoring for because for a long time people were like people were like and these people still are is that this game is awful it's like it's the, the, the lowest point of Rare's career. And it's like, I, I, I personally don't see it that way. I can I can understand maybe why some people feel that way, but like, f from my perspective, I don't see it. I think it, it's a game that has great things in it, but that certain small things bring it down. But the small things that do bring it down are more like nitpicks over than certain things. Yeah, it's... Still been an enjoyable game. I, I still enjoy playing it. Uh, I, I still recommend uh, playing this game, even though it, it's it's on the buggy side and it probably would be a little hard for some people to get into. But I don't know. There could possibly still be some enjoyment. Like there, there's still some cool stuff in there. So yeah, uh, I'm going to call it on this one. So thank you for watching this GWC plays. It was actually a really it was a really good one. Like th this is what I've been wanting to do for a while because th this game, this game doesn't get as much love, <laughs> and uh, it's always good to talk some DK64. So that's gonna be it for me here. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm John, and I will see you later.